Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. This is Ron Lee from DJI Enterprise. And today's video, we will be covering DJI Terra version 3.7 updates. Before we deep dive into all the new functionalities of version 3.7, I do like to share where you could find the latest version of DJI Terra software and uh, release notes. So let's open up a browser real quick and go to enterprise.dji.com. Under products, software, and DJI Terra, you want to click on DJI Terra and select download. And here you go. You should be able to find the latest version of DJI Terra available for you to download here. Uh, but along with the download link, you should be able to find a release notes document. If you open this document up, it will show you all the latest updates uh, in detail. So as you can see, the version 3.7, which is currently the latest, and it shows you what's new, that shows you all the new functionality version 3.7 brings to DJI Terra, and what's updated. That means what's changed within the version 3.7, as well as what's fixed, that indicates all the issue has been fixed within the version 3.7. I highly recommend you to go through this document and uh, to learn what has been added and what has been changed uh, in DJI Terra. As you can see, we have so many new updates within the version 3.7. And today's video, I will be covering these two functionalities. Uh, the first one is the auto identify mark function. This applies to ground control point management settings and applies to all ground control points you imported into DJI Terra as well as checkpoints you imported into Terra. So now you should be able to get the first target marked and then the rest of the image which contains the ground control points or checkpoints can automatically be identified and marked within DJI Terra software. I will cover this functionality later in today's video. Uh, the second functionality I would like to share is the ground extraction using DJI Terra. Within DJI Terra, you should be able to get the ground or the bare earth classified within the point cloud data collected from the Zamus L1 LiDAR sensor. Okay, with that being said, let's get started. Let's open up DJI Terra software. Okay, so the first functionality I would like to show is a feature we released called Auto Identify Mark. This functionality would allow user to manually tie the ground control point or checkpoint once and Terra would mark rest of the photos automatically. This saves you a lot of time marking ground control points as well as checkpoints manually. Let's use two datasets today to demonstrate this functionality. The first dataset I've prepared contains four ground control point targets. As you can see, I have the aero triangulation model pre-processed for today's demo. And now we just need to go to ground control point management. From there, we just need to import our ground control points. So I'm gonna select import ground control point and select my Excel sheet, which contains my ground control points. From here, you just need to identify uh, the name of the ground control point, latitude, longitude, as well as altitude of your ground control points. And please identify the coordinate system for your ground control points as well here. Once you finish, select import. If you define the coordinate system correctly, uh, you should be able to see your ground control points labeled here on the right side, as well as seeing them popped up on the 3D viewer, along with the point cloud, as well as the image post. After we import all the ground control points, we notice on the bottom, we have additional auto identify mark option, which is default enabled, as well as identified marks number. If you enable these options among all the photos which contain ground control points, you will simply need to mark one of these and DJI Terra should be able to mark the rest. 
For example, let's mark the first one. And the yellow target I'm showing you as my cursor indicates where I'm going to mark my ground control point. And as soon as I marked my first ground control point in my first photo, as you can see, DJI Terra was able to mark rest of photos automatically. Currently, I have seven photos which contains this ground control point, and I have set DJI Terra to mark 99 photos. If total number of the photos is less than 99, DJI Terra would mark them all. Then you simply just need to move to the next ground control point and select one of the photos which contain ground control point and identify the target, then mark your target. DJI Terra would automatically mark other photos. When you have a project, again, contains many GCPs, this is a very, very handy tool for you to have to save your time marking photos manually. We have marked four ground control points, and as you can see, on average, we have seven photos marked for each target. Now, for this specific demo, we showcase auto identify mark functionality applied to general ground control point shaped target. But this functionality is not limited based on the target shape. For example, let's open up a different project. This project specifically is a lot bigger compared to the other one and it contains more ground control points. Let's go to the ground control point management and import ground control point. As you can see, this one contains 15 ground control points. And similarly, I'm going to define the name of the ground control point, latitude, longitude, as well as the altitude. Then I'm going to define the coordinate system of ground control points captured. Then select import to import all ground control points into DJI Terra. And for this project, since the ground control point 15 is out of the mapping boundary, I will not use this one. Okay, so that leaves us 14 ground control points to work with. But as you can see, if I quickly browse through these ground control points, as you can see, these points are actually not contain any targets. But DJI Terra would still be able to identify these targets you set without any issue. Let's go to the ground control point number one. For this target, I purposely place the ground control point and record the ground control point for this corner. So similar concept, we just need to align and mark our first photo. And as you can see, DJI Terra automatically identified the same mark within the rest of the photos. For the second ground control point, let's do the same thing. Manually mark one photo and rest of the photos are marked automatically. Notice we have 32 photos which contains the ground control point. However, only 28 photos were marked. Let's check out those photos that weren't marked automatically. And as you can see, the reason is because the building blocked the ground control point on the ground. So for the photos are not marked automatically, you can manually mark those as well. And now we just need to finish the rest of the ground control points by marking one photo of each mark.
Okay, for this part, I did not fast forward the video. And as you can see, I was able to mark 14 ground control points and have sufficient number of photos marked for each target. And from there, I just need to do again my optimization. And once I finish, I'll be able to start my reconstruction. All right. So that was the auto mark identify functionality for ground control point and mark points in DJI Terra version 3.7. The next feature update I would like to go through is the LiDAR point cloud ground classification. For demoing this feature, I will be using a dataset collected from the L1 sensor. So I just opened up a L1 project. Now this point cloud data was collected using the Zemius L1 LiDAR payload. And notice under the point cloud processing settings, we now have option ground point type. Enable this option would have Terra automatically classify the ground points on the surface layer or bare earth layer. Notice under the settings, we have four additional settings. The first one is the ground type. We have three options for you to select from. The first one being flat ground, second one being the gentle slope, and third one being the steep slope. Based on different scene, you can select and apply different terrain profile. Changing the ground type would also have Terra adjust the following iteration angle and iteration distance settings. The next setting we have is building max diagonal. We have a building which is contained within your scene. Select this option and define the maximum diagonal length of your building from the top view. This would help Terra to better identify artificial structure and speed up the classification process. Then we have iteration angle and iteration distance. Normally you don't have to change the iteration angle and iteration distance setting. But adjusting iteration angle as well as the iteration distance would help you fine tune the ground classification result and provide you more freedom on the ground classification. Once you set up the ground point type settings, simply start process your LiDAR point cloud data. Once you finish, you will notice there's an additional viewing tab named type. From this page, you'll be able to see points being categorized versus points are not categorized. For this one specifically, you'll notice points are colorized as yellow and rest of the point cloud model is not categorized. In the upper right corner, you would find this filter icon. Select, you'd be able to hide or unhide certain categorized points. For example, you can select the ground point only and hide points not categorized to display only points on the ground layer. And once you finish the process, from the LAS file, DJI Terra output, go to LiDARs and Terra underline LAS file. This point cloud data contains the categorized ground point layer. And if you import this LAS file into a third party software, you will be able to display the ground layer points directly. So that is the LiDAR point cloud ground classification tool. In addition, DJI Terra version 3.7 also brought some minor updates as well as changes. For example, now in the photogrammetry process mission, you have an option to reduce the model to. This would reduce the size of the model and its default to 50%. If you wish to have Terra output maximum number of triangles in the mesh model, you can set this to 100%. The second minor update we have is on the 3D model block alignment. I'm going to open up a project which has the aerial triangulation model to pre-process to demo this functionality. Within the region of interest block settings under advanced settings for 3D reconstruction, you can assign the boundary by draw a polygon region of interest directly from Terra software and save the region of interest and under the block splitting option, select custom slide length. 
And from here, you can define the site length of your block. For example, I'm going to set this to 10 meters. And I'm going to go to editing mode. Now you'll be able to find a option popped up, which is auto align blocks. I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so we can see everything clearly. And as you can see, I'm currently under the top view and DJ Terra automatically split the entire model into many, many different blocks. And each block has 10 meters by 10 meters side length based on my setting. And as you can see, the region of interest I draw have section that may only contains a tiny little portion of my interest area. In that case, I can just select this option now, auto align blocks, and Terra will automatically fill in the close by block for better alignment between different blocks and ensure the alignment quality. And by doing this, you have each block having the same dimension and same side length. In order to align these blocks properly, please make sure to have the same splitting origin as well as the coordinate system output. Now I'm going to save this result and define my horizontal coordinate system as well as my geoid. And after I set up my region of interest and block section properly, I can go back. Then under the custom model origin, define my model origin and record this model origin. In the future, if I would need to replace certain blocks, I can apply the same model origin from the previous project and then go to the region of interest by input the same site length, distance, same coordinate system, as well as the same split and origin, and obviously with the same boundary. After I finish my process, I will be able to replace certain blocks I have, which was captured from recent flight, and replace certain blocks into the previous reconstructed model and overwrite old model blocks. So that was the auto block alignment. The next change we have is on the quality report. If we open up the quality report, now we notice we can now export the quality report in a PDF format and we have changed the layout of the quality report as it now contains more information such as flight parameters as well as accuracy information for checkpoints and ground control points individually as well as find the camera post residual from each individual photo all the post residual for each individual photo will be recorded into an excel sheet named post residual of camera.csv under the project folder Okay, so that was the update of DJI Terra version 3.7, and I hope you find this video helpful. If you would like to know more information about the latest Terra updates, please go to our Terra website, and you can find more detail under the product release notes. Thank you. See you in the next one.